one. Good morning. There's no light on. Come on, wake up. <laughs> we, we ready to go? Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the November 16, 2021 Board of Selectmen's meeting down of Effingham. Before we get started, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But they can't hear us. Thank you very much. A couple items before we get started. Uh, Tom Hart will be here this morning. He's attending to a family matter. Um, and the town office phones are currently down. But the internet to the town office is still up. So we're, we're partially there and the solution is being worked on. So hopefully we'll hear something on that shortly. Okay, let's go to signature folder. I'll make a motion to pass the selection meeting minutes for November 9, 2021 as amended. You suck it there. All in favor, for aye. Aye. Uh, make a motion to pass the non-public meeting minutes with Chief Burbank, um, the first of two non-publics that day of November 16, 2021, to hear a second. Second. All those in favor, full or aye. Aye. And then the second, make a motion to pass non-public meeting minutes, two of two for November 16, 2021, your second. Second. All those in favor, full or aye. Aye. Okay, uh, the manifest this week for November 18, 2021 is in the amount of $244,892.61. Do I hear a motion to pass that? I'll make the motion. Good, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> we'll switch it up. <laughs> um, and about 192000 just a little over 192000 of that was a regular school payment. Uh, in the mail. Um, there was a USDA potential grant opportunity. We're going to briefly talk about that this morning and then dive, uh, do some more explanation on it. And an N NHMA membership letter. Audrey, when I saw that and read that yesterday, um, it said there was an invoice or something attached. Did we get an invoice for that? Or? We did. It's not due until January. That's perfect. Um, and what was the difference between last year and this year? Do you know? Because I know it's based on size and they had a 2% increase in there. Don't need it right now. Yeah. I just want to make sure we just write enough money in the budget so we would put it in. Yeah, there. it was okay. a couple hundred. Okay. Um, then we move into town administrator comments. Um, so the tax bills were processed yesterday. They are on the kiosk for people who want to pay electronically or go in and see what their tax bill is. And they are the printers. The official due date is December 27th. Um, goes your Christmas present. We're <laughs> <laughs> not getting one this year. <laughs> On the USDA grant, the closure status, I spoke to her name's Diane um yesterday and she said they reviewed all of the state closure documents i sent them and because of the unusual it's a bridge not a building a home or something a barn um that they are considering the grant closed perfect did we get that in writing i will follow up with an email thank you um the state i talked to them as well and we have one they need to finalize on payment to us it's approximately $190. Once we receive that payment, they will send us the invoice for the interest. Okay, good. Okay. And um, consolidated, you might have seen in your manifest that when we changed Rebecca's phone number to a cell phone and put a new number out back, um, they had charged us termination, and I've been fighting that since September. I thought that was the cause of us not having phones this morning, so I was in a little bit of a panic mode. Um, but it's an area-wide outage. I also so have, have you been able to solve that one? Do we order, or are you still working on it? Um, our reps on it, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. I raised my frustration level yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with a utility company? I can't imagine that. I've never and heard of a termination fee for a landline before. 
It's a um, package, and we're not landline. We are internet oh. lines, so it's called Voice Over IP yeah. Internet Protocol. So all of our phones go through. Oh, hers, hers was too. Yeah. Oh, okay. And for some reason, her phone number was the um, primary phone number on the account. Who oh, no. knows? Anyway, we're in good shape now. And I communicated with Earl about the silo. Um, I spend a lot of my Mondays just doing follow up. And Earl is still going to try to be here by the um, first weekend in December. He's very busy with work. So, yep. Did we get paid for that already? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. I have a few outstanding items. Um, we modified the procurement um, policy yesterday. I don't know if we need to do anything else about that on no, the because website. Because it was a it town wasn't. meeting warrant article. Right. We changed that. So right. we just need to edit the document and make sure the proper document's up there. And I need to, I have one cemetery agreement um, deed, if you will, outstanding the Evans contract and tidying up the personnel policy and procedure. Those are my, my hot items. That's all I have. All right. Um, nothing that we just didn't have talk about with the uh, transfer station building. And the roads. Yeah, we as soon up. as we get done our comments, we're gonna dive into that. I'm gonna yeah. come on with some edits, I think. Anything else? No. Okay. Um did some more homework on the discussion last week with the poor farm cemetery. Um if we're if we decide to go that route, um I would only pursue it if the landowner is willing to do a deed change. For that entire property, meaning it's access and the town would own the cemetery. So it's going to be, it's going to involve some money to do that. Um, I don't know what Tom's feeling is on that, but just having it where we can't access it because it's on private property, uh, people today could authorize it, say, yep, next person that owns it could say, nope, and then we'd be stuck. Yeah, well, I think uh, if memory, I went to that trustees meeting. Few years back, cemetery with uh, Shelburne, but uh, I think if there's a, a cemetery, I don't think that um, unless it's a private cemetery that they can deny access to it. Has to have a right of way to it. I don't think you can bar people. <laughs> well, it is a private can, cemetery right they now. They can well. They can deny access except by appointment. What, I, mean, I can't remember. I was five years ago. What it ago, means so. is they can be very stubborn. And yeah, at this point, if we're going to do it, it needs to be kind of clean, perpetual, right. make sure we don't get into any discussions down the road. The only way that would happen is with a deed change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I don't. That would take some probably uh, legal work and the research of it, um, ownership and everything else, then a change to the deed and a cost is related to that, and then filing fees. I mean, if it's going to be a you know a big bucket of worms, I'm not, I don't. I don't have a problem leaving it the way it is. I don't. I mean, if we get better clarification where it is right now relative to the discussion you two gentlemen just made around, okay, what is our authorized access, and we can document that for the town part of it. Maybe even put it out on tape here. Um, I'd be in favor of going that route yeah. in the short term. I think it also had something to do with uh, descendants. You can't uh, buy descendants from. Going to the but, that's, but we don't even know who's there. So, yeah. um, but again, it can be done. Yeah, only by so. appointment through the people that own it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Lenny and I looked at a map yes or last week, and um, I just want to verify the correct landowner. You know, so I, that if we reach out, write a letter, say we're interested, um, we'll talk to you. Then I'm reaching out to the right person. Yeah. It was Ace and Knowles that owned it, but uh, I believe he died. So I don't know if his wife has it. Or it was a lot. We, we identified at some some trustees. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, so if if we decide to get down that route, um, my recommendation is we do it with a warrant article to make sure everybody in town right, right. is aware of it and approves it, because <clears throat> once you get into that expense, 
you will never get out of that expense. Right. So once you take it on, you own it forever. Yeah. Um, and there is no trust fund for any of that stuff up there. So it's a pure cost to the town to maintain it. <clears throat> um, well, I think it would fall into the cemetery budget. You know. But that I mean, is the cost of the town. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like we do a couple grand but a year I mean, now for don't, one. We don't even really spend the two grand in the cemeteries. So. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I, I understand that. I, yeah. mean, I want all that on the table so people are fully aware that, you know, here's what it is and here's what we're already doing to maintain the town cemetery. So, um, and it wouldn't preclude nonprofits or any other entity wanting to go in and just do it on their own if they get permission from the town. I mean, there are things that can be done. Yeah. Oh, um, it was just a question put to me, so I said, oh, thank No, you. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good one. Oh. It's a good one. Um, the USDA Rural Development Grant stuff, um, I read it three times and it was only this morning that I saw that uh, looks like road improvements or something along that line, infrastructure improvements could be in there. Would you check and find out what it takes for us to apply for a grant and how turnkey it has to be. Yes, I started that already. Okay. And um, first, yeah, I had to find out because the town has to be in a certain median income of the area. So I'm making sure we meet that criteria. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah, because we've been using that same criteria right. for the USDA grants for the library and for the okay. uh, town hall project. Right. We're not at the 75% level that's mentioned in there. We're more yeah. in the sixty percent level. So, if we were to pursue something, we'd be looking at about a forty percent match if we were approved at sixty percent. Okay. So, but I think it's worth taking a look at for Bailey Road as well as Moody yeah. Mountain Road or where we would want to go with that. Okay. Good. Um, let's see. The ordinance, transfer station ordinance. So, couple. I did a side-by-side -side compare yesterday on the computer. Um, and I had a couple of questions on item six, um, the unacceptable materials, um, item B. Um, there's, there was board removal of art and craft supplies. We need to have that stay in there because we have a problem with that. That's why we added that. Okay. So these are your notes in here. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's why I gave you a copy of it. Just so you, you got it. And then um, E with the smoke detectors. Um, I was actually looking for the old wording on that. I'm good with that one then. Um, payment of fees, item eight. Um, under item B four, um, the attendant will attempt, not shall, because ninety nine percent of the people refuse to take it. And when you do print it, they just tell the guys to throw it in the container. They don't even take it in their hands. So we could, we just need to be flexible with that one. Mm -hmm. um, and then item number five. Would you just italicize that entire paragraph to make it stand out so that if anybody's got a question around the attendant discretion, they can see that it's in writing right there. Mm -hmm. And Lenny had a couple of items that he discovered. Yeah, it's just uh, under the permits. Residents may purchase permits to the transfer station, but it should be ends, not in. You get residents like the abode that you live in. It should be resident, like okay. the inhabitant. <laughs> yeah. For the record, I didn't type this from scratch. I no, no, no. no. <laughs> and in doing the side by side with the way the automatic spell check, there was some spelling errors. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about the uh, one place that said no oil, but uh, then it said we will take oil. Where, where was the no oil? Uh, well, I, in the old one. Oh, it was the old one, yeah. I can do a, a word search oil. Yeah, if you would, just, uh, just check it, because I want to make sure. So. And we want to make sure it's motor oil, because 
there's different types of oil. So well, I think just... in, in Appendix A, I put that. Okay. I put motor oil. Yeah. Because there's gear oil and there's hydraulic oil, and so we okay. don't know what what we can take and what we can get rid of. Okay. And, and I'm literally in that item six underneath that. If you put motor oil and then only in parentheses waste, that should help us with that definition. So yes, we will be taking motor oil. We're waiting right now on the delivery of some containers. So we can't take any motor oil yet until we get to containers, but we want to make sure as soon as we get the containers, we can open the doors and, and go forward. A question about that? Pardon me? If you bring it in another container, you accept it? They, yeah, typically what they'll so do. So how do you know it's motor oil? They, the, basically there's ways to look at it. Like if it's mixed with antifreeze, it changes a different color immediately and it smells different. So the guys won't accept it. Okay, so they'll so, do they and, that on. There will be times, Vicki, where somebody sneaks something by. Yeah. And because of that, and because of the cost of disposal, so it's like a couple bucks to get rid of a gallon, but it's like 14 or 15 bucks to get rid of a contaminated gallon. Um, we're going to charge on the low end, knowing that we may or may not be caught, but we're going to try and mitigate that. Because what we're doing is using a couple of smaller containers, fill those, and then we've got test kits supplied by okay. Clean Harbors. And if it meets the criteria, we're good. We can just move it into the big tank. If it needs to be, it's closed, but it could be diluted a little bit. We actually have a second tank. We'll be able to dilute it, and then we can test it again, and then move everything over in the big container. So it's a way to prevent us from getting stuck with 500 gallons of contaminated oil. So we're, we're trying to put some process into it and allow us to do it. And in talking with... Um, Brad and Mark um, and Bill at the transfer station, when they used to take it, they could literally, when it comes in, you can see stuff swimming in the top of it, mm -hmm. or the smell or the color. Oh. So they can, they can do some differentiation right up front. Um, but if it's something that gets by us, we'll hopefully be able to mitigate the size of it. So mm -hmm. at maximum, we would be stuck with 55 gallons rather than 500. Okay. Cool. So, all right, anything else? Uh, I don't know. Did we, you have a call in the Clean Harvest to, about the old containers? Yeah. And how about the tires? We never did show up to come back to get the tires. I saw that on Darlene's desk yesterday. I can't remember if it was an email or I actually physically saw it on her desk. But yeah. Because they came that day and I let them in, but I didn't have a key to the, the building, the uh, storage trailer. So. I thought they were coming back the following Wednesday. Yeah, I'll verify. I know we did a, a white pickup yesterday and a metal pickup we scheduled, and I believe I saw tires in that. Okay, yeah. Good. Because the Freon, they drained the Freon, so I just wanted to get them out of there before winter. Yeah. For Perfect. all the spring picks. <laughs> and because of the fee structure where we're adding motor oil in there, can we just make sure with the posting we have for the public hearing next Tuesday, we need a seven day notice, which means it's got to go today. If we can yeah. put the fee structure right up there so people can see mm -hmm. it. Um, in out of fee structures, the only thing is we're, we're just adding motor oil and putting a fee to it. None of the other fees are changing. So, okay, that's what I had on that one. Um, that and that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to do some clarity on from last week's discussion around the property tax rate that we approved at $22 and 49 cents thousand. So because of the third year, $63,000 settlement payment to Eversource utility as an abatement, um, we had to put money into an overlay to make sure we have that money in there. And that basically changed the rate from whatever I said last week for the town, $8.53 a thousand. That's down 28 cents from 2021. So the county rate went up four cents. The local education to the school district went up a dollar 52 cents. So basically the raise you see, the, the price you see is the bump of that. 
and the state education went up four. So the county going down and the state going up four cents each kind of basically neutralizes that. So um, if you basically take the 152 and you minus what we saved in the municipal budget, then you know how the tax rate increased. Okay. okay. Dave, do you want to, as the budget chair, do you want anything additional? No, no, that covered it. Okay, good. I just want to make sure we had it there. Okay, um, that's all I had for this week. So public comment. Do we have anybody on the line, Audrey? Um, we have staff on the line. If anyone wants to make a comment, you can raise your hands or come in. <laughs> I think, I'm, no, I think um, we did both at Deanna's <laughs> announcements about the tax bills and phones. Yeah. <laughs> they do, they do. Oh. <laughs> All right, Any, anybody from the city public this morning? No. I have a quick update I found in my notes on um, the light at 30 Townhouse Road. The repair has been scheduled. Perfect. Okay. You got, and, you got my picture finally? Yes. Okay. And then um, Pine River Road, the inquiry from a citizen on that. It is not our light. It's oh, not. Okay. Right. So. Can you let, so how did that come into us? We got a call in the office? Or? Yeah. So a woman had made two calls. Okay. And, and then um, we'll schedule, we need to schedule the work session Thursday. Yeah, and Lenny can't do Thursday or Friday. So we'll, let's just add it on to next Thursday okay. and we'll, we'll do it there. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Garcel. Uh, just a, <coughs> excuse me, a comment uh, back to the uh, cemetery. <coughs> uh, in Lineborough, we had a piece of property that bordered one of those cemeteries and the next door neighbor owned it, but it did border. <clears throat> and that's why I knew, well, I mean, I already did all the research and the loss of that stuff. Um, but what I wanted to say is that you're on the right track to get the town to own it outright and access because it's going to save us a lot of headaches and the property owners a lot of headaches down the road. So if you're going to do it, that's the way. That, that's the only way I could, after doing some recent legal research this week, that was the only way I could come up with the town's protected now and into the future and there's no houses. So, I'm curious uh, why you would want to purchase the property and not just do an easement. Because we do. The, the property is significant. It's like 14 or 29 acres. It's big. Yeah, it's a big if it if it becomes a town owned cemetery, you can't town own it if you lease it. Not in perpetuity. Um, but that but that's all part of title yeah. research. That's all part of like right, explaining right. it to the title attorney and saying, here's what we want, and here's how it's gonna work, and yeah. okay. make it happen on paper. So and they'll have to do title searches and other things. So it's yeah. not gonna be cheap. I mean, I, I did a title search recently for a property in town and it was like 1400 bucks. Yeah. So that, that wasn't changing the deed. That was just getting history on the deed and getting it yeah. documented. So, um, and then legal fees be on top of that to draft anything. And then file it with the county and pay all the tax stamps for real estate. Um, any other comments? Any non-public meeting? I have nothing. Neither do I. Uh, next meeting is Tuesday, November 23rd at 9 a.m. Budget committee meeting is the 23rd at 6 p.m. And tonight. And tonight. And tonight. <laughs> and tonight. And the 30th. Okay. And the 30th. <laughs> so 16, 23, 30. Okay. It will be budget committee 6 p.m. <laughs> here in this room. All right. There's nothing else. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor, full or aye. Aye. Thank you very much, folks. <clears throat> <sighs> I love it.